Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Well guys, it's finally here. AMC first quarter results on deck as analysts eye box office rebound. AMC first quarter earnings webcast is tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time at the Bell on payday, which means some people might be trading during the webcast. This could get exciting. And you have to admit, this is a great atmosphere to have an earnings call in. Headline. The Super Mario Brothers movie breaks more box office records around the world. Almost a month after its worldwide debut, the Super Mario Brothers movie is still breaking all sorts of records around the globe. The latest success story comes from Mexico, with the Nintendo and Illumination production becoming the third highest grossing film in the history of the country from the article. It's obvious to me that the industry and AMC Entertainment is gaining momentum. Headline from Deadline, Little Mermaid to do backflips over Memorial Day weekend with $110 million opening box office early look. And coming this weekend, a headline from Variety, Guardians of the Galaxy to end Super Mario's four-week box office reign with a $120 million debut. It turns out our predatory short hedge funds might be losing some friends. A headline from Reuters, short selling comes under fire as regional banks sell off. From the article, the practice of short selling is coming under increased scrutiny as shares of regional banks remain under pressure with some calls for more regulatory oversight of the practice. Short sellers who borrow shares they expect to fall and hope to repay the loan for less later to pocket the difference have profited from the banking crisis. They gained $1.2 billion in the first two days of May, analytic firm Ortex said. Wachtell, Lipton, Roser & Katz, a law firm that has represented large companies such as Twitter, in mergers and against attacks from hedge funds on Thursday called on U.S. securities regulators to restrict short sales of financial institutions. In a letter to clients, Wachtell said that the SEC should regulate what it defined as coordinated short attacks by imposing a 15 trading day prohibition on short sales of financial institutions. How different from that is taking advantage of the pandemic and shorting a hundred-year-old American company. None, I say. And a breaking article from Hedge Week today. Hedge funds face more disclosures as SEC adopts Form PF amendments. From the article, large hedge fund managers will now have to make more disclosures about their investment activities after the U.S. SEC yesterday voted to adopt a series of amendments to Form PF, the confidential reporting form for certain SEC-registered investment advisors to private funds. The SEC says the amendments are designed to enhance the ability of the Financial Stability Oversight Council to assess systematic risk and to bolster the Commission's oversight of private fund advisors and its investor protection efforts. And for those of you who haven't heard, because it's nowhere in the news, our buddy Kenny G is getting sued. From Investor Turf on Twitter, Ken Griffin is facing a lawsuit from artwork insurers who claim that he has failed to respond to a subpoena. The insurers, which include Lloyds of London, Great Lakes, Swiss RE, and AIG, are seeking information from Griffin regarding a fire 
at Ron Perlman's home, which allegedly led to the destruction of multiple valuable paintings. Another suspicious fire. Now, wherever there are problems, troubles, and human suffering, you can bet there will also be a predatory short hedge fund there to profit from the misery. A headline from Bloomberg. Short sellers lose $64 million on one regional bank stock bucking turmoil. Traders betting against shares of New York Community Bank Corp have been saddled with roughly $64 million in paper losses this year, according to data from S3 Partners. It's by far the largest mark-to-market loss for U.S. regional bank short sellers and the only unprofitable short position that's greater than $5 million. In contrast, traders who have shorted regional banks are up nearly $7 billion in paper profits so far this year. Now, that goes out to all my friends that think we need a crash in order for AMC to have a short covering event. Well, guess what? These guys can make a lot of money when the market goes down. That's why they're predatory short hedge funds. Remember when Uncle Frank was rooting for a face-melting rally? That's why. That being said, black swans continue to fill the skies. A headline from USA Today, U.S. Banking Crisis. Close to 190 banks could collapse, according to study from the article. With the failure of three regional banks since March and another one teetering on the brink, will America soon see a cascade of bank failures? Quote, the recent declines in bank asset values very significantly increase the fragility of the U.S. banking system to uninsured depositor runs, economists wrote in a recent paper published on the Social Science Research Network. A run on these banks could pose a risk to even insured depositors, those with less than 250000 in the bank, as the FDIC's deposit insurance fund starts incurring losses, the economist wrote. Hey guys, look, when other stocks go down sharply, they halt them. I wonder what that's like. From The Guardian today, trading in the shares of two more regional U.S. lenders was temporarily suspended on Thursday amid a widening crisis for the country's mid-sized banks. Regulators stepped in to halt trading in the Los Angeles-based PacWest and Arizona's Western Alliance following dramatic drops in their share prices. It came after another mid-sized bank, First Republic, was sold to J.P. Morgan earlier this week. Depositors had pulled $100 billion from First Republic, fearing their money was no longer safe. PacWest had sought to calm markets on Wednesday and said it was in talks with several potential investors after its shares fell by as much as 60%. But the sell-off continued on Thursday and affected other regional banks. But AMC had a delightful day in front of its earnings call. The S&P 500 was down 29. The Dow was down 286. NASDAQ down 58.93, but AMC closed at 592, up 3.14%. The Ape finished at $1.56, up 2.63%, bringing the consolidated price of AMC and Ape to 7.48, up 3.03% on only 36,296,000 shares traded. Now, based on that last price, of 592 be expecting support to the downside at levels 574 and 557 to the upside expect resistance at points 607 623 and 640 hopefully we blow through all three of them at the time of this recording, I've got Max Payne at 550, put call ratio under one at 0.9296. I see 38,000 calls in the money expiring May 5th, and at the $6 strike, 37,760 calls in the money. And would you look at this? Someone's expecting some trouble today. All of a sudden, 
2.7 million shares available to borrow at a borrow rate of 170.7%. Welcome to the Tijuana Stock Exchange. One of the things I'm hoping to hear about tomorrow is our progress with the AMC Movie Merchandise website. I remember lots of things sold out, but how come we never get to hear about it? I'm also eager to hear an update about our new retail popcorn rollout. How many stores did it sell out? Why are we only selling to Walmart? Why can't we sell at Costco? Do we have any plans to distribute the popcorn in other retail chains? Or are we going to be the only popcorn business in the world that sells its product with just one retailer? And finally, I'd love to get an update on our new branded credit card. How many people applied? How many were approved? How well was this program received? I've got mine, but I don't have any information on how this program is performing. Now, this next series of slides is dedicated to Phil For Real, Bigums, Boss Blunts, a lot of the YouTube and Twitter personalities uh, that I follow and I like. They're all yes voters and they're very angry at the no voters. Now, this reverse split and QSIP change idea really didn't work out that well for Mullen. And I'm a shareholder. I wanted it to work. But I want you guys to understand that because we disagree with the path that AMC management is on doesn't mean we should all turn on each other. I want you guys to know that some of the problems I've pointed to in this and other videos are marketing related. So let's discuss our executive vice president and chief marketing officer at AMC, Stephen Colanero. Now, I want you to go back with me to 2021. We pay this guy $551,000 a year. In 2021, during the pandemic, while we were amassing $5 billion in debt, while we were being starved for movies from Hollywood, and to some degree, we still are, I want you to know we paid this guy a non-stock cash bonus that exceeds his base salary of $649,000. Then we gave him another $1,287,000 in stock. Now, gentlemen, if you go to secform4.com, over the past five years, I haven't seen Stephen Colanero purchase even one share but he's managed to sell $7,958,000 worth of the stock. To, the, to my knowledge, I don't know if this man's ever bought a share, okay? But when your company is struggling to survive, I don't know if we can afford to pay people bonuses that exceed their base salaries and then dump another pile of, uh, you know, huge pile of stock on them and they just sell it to us and bang out of it. You guys have to see that it's going to be nearly impossible for us to catch 2019 and gain profitability when our entire senior management team is behaving exactly the same way. I can't vote yes for these guys, okay? Um, it's not, hey, Frank, we're either going into bankruptcy or we go with Adam's plan. No, there's a third way, okay? Um, we could come up with a way, a schedule, to pay down the debt so that our debt to equity ratio gets to about, you know, 2.0. So when people are screening to buy the stock, the company will qualify, okay? We don't have to pay off all our debt. That's an absurd idea. So we don't have to dilute to this degree. There is a third option, guys, and I hope that all the people I mentioned will leave open the possibility that they could be wrong about Adam Aaron and this management team.
As you know, I will never tell you to buy, sell, or hold any security or cryptocurrency. I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. But like it or not, if you're an AMC shareholder, you own a piece of the largest theatrical company on the planet. And I want you to understand, the pandemic forced AMC to modify and modernize its business model. I'm happy to report that there is no other business exactly like it, in my opinion. It has no like competitors. Its largest competitor is currently emerging from bankruptcy court and doesn't look to be recovering that well. This in itself presents a historic opportunity for AMC to increase its market share. And while I believe the industry itself will continue to contract due to the advent of streaming, the pandemic, and limited product flow from Hollywood, AMC is emerging as the one business in this sector that can actually grow and expand. In fact, I've long believed AMC has a distinct chance to be the last man standing in its sector and could even develop into a legal monopoly caused by the attrition of its competitors and their inability to keep pace and adapt the way AMC has. Most of the pundits on Wall Street have constantly polarized our business from the emerging streaming giants, declaring that only one can survive and therefore we must make a choice between the two. But I contend that this forecast is patently false. The theatrical success of films like Mario Brothers prove that the consumer still values and distinguishes the theater experience from just streaming at home. If you study this slide, you can see how the company's changed and diversified, especially over the past two years. Now, why am I reviewing all this? Because I want you to know that I'm invested in a company that's not only the largest of its kind, but it's becoming the only one of its kind. And that can be a very rare and valuable opportunity in the stock market. And as time passes and the experts begin to see AMC as a better investment opportunity than it is a shorting opportunity, we could experience a landslide in price appreciation in the opposite direction of what we experienced over the past two years. It's becoming more and more clear to me that if you want to present your content to a live indoor audience, you are going to have to work with AMC theaters. We are slowly becoming one of the primary tollways for the entertainment business. Eventually, someone bigger than us will hopefully want to control or invest in that access. Hey, I want to thank you for watching and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.